If you have ever fished in a body of water with stocked fish, it's fairly likely that you've caught one or more of the hybrid species on this list. Theoretically, these hybrids can occur naturally anywhere the range of both parent species overlap. However, in most cases, that range is very limited and hybridization actually occurring is pretty rare. The stocking of hybrid fish has become increasingly popular throughout the US and Canada in the last 50 years. The main reason for this being that these hybrids create new and diverse fishing opportunities, they have environmental uses, and there's an ease of population control as many hybrids are sterile and can't reproduce. There are some fish that naturally hybridize on a somewhat regular basis, like cutbows, a cross of cutthroat trout and rainbow trout. There's also the greengill, which is a cross of green sunfish and bluegill. However, these fish, unlike the main five that I will soon list, aren't intentionally stocked nearly as much or, in most cases, not stocked at all. Splake is a cross between a male brook trout and a female lake trout, and they are actually known to grow faster than either parent. They typically reach 10 to 18 inches long and usually weigh 2 to 6 pounds. However, due to the lake trout in them, it isn't unheard of for trophies to be caught at around 20 pounds. In appearance, they have a decent blend of both parents. They have a moderately forked tail that's somewhere in between the brook trout's shallow fork and the lake trout's deep fork. They have a speckled body pattern and often orange-reddish ventral fins like the brook trout. Unlike the brook trout, splake lack the blue haloed red spots, and their bodies are usually more silvery. In short, splake are silvery gray with spots, they have a slightly forked tail, and they have the brook trout's fin coloration. Like both parent species, splake are a cold water fish. They thrive in the cool depths of lakes, preferably 50 to 60 degrees Fahrenheit. On average, they like temperatures that are cooler than what a brook trout would prefer, but warmer than what a lake trout would prefer. They feed aggressively as fry, beginning with insects and invertebrates, then quickly switch to eating fish as soon as they are able. Typically, splake become fish eaters earlier in their life than brook trout would. They are known to be good fighters on the line, making them fun for anglers, and they're generally considered to be excellent table fare. Splake are almost entirely hatchery produced. Natural reproduction in the wild is extremely rare. Although a splake is genetically capable of reproduction, trout normally choose mates of their own species and have different spawning behaviors. Only a handful of splake offspring have ever been documented in the wild from some lakes in Canada, and even those were under very unusual conditions. In practice, splake are functionally sterile, sometimes being called behaviorally sterile, because they won't naturally sustain populations. Usually fisheries managers stock splake yearly in order to maintain a fishery. Like pretty much all hybrids, this control is actually one of the standout features of why hybrids are used because managers can regulate exact numbers and avoid unexpected breeding. In summary, splake are stocked as a put and take trout for anglers, big enough to catch, delicious to eat, and manageable for fisheries. The tiger trout is a cross between a female brown trout and a male brook trout. Unlike splake, this cross is intergeneric. Tiger trout get their name from their beautifully colored patterns. Honestly, I think that leopard trout would have been a more appropriate name since their pattern resembles a leopard much more than a tiger, but either way, it's still super cool. They usually have a brownish or olive body as a result from the brown trout genetics overlaid with dark, intricate patterning of the same pattern found along the back of the brook trout. Size-wise, tiger trout are generally moderate, around 10 to 16 inches on average, with big ones reaching from 17 even to lengths of 30. They're often smaller than trophy brown trout, but they fight hard. The body shape is similar to the brown trout, but the unique pattern really just makes them stand out. They don't have the bright orange or red fins of the brook trout, nor the solid spots of the brown trout. Really, there isn't any reason to misidentify a tiger trout because they are just so unique in pattern. Tiger trout are aggressive predators. They actively feed on small fish and invertebrates. Anglers have noted that tiger trout tend to be more aggressive than either parent species. They can occupy cold water streams and lakes like brook trout and brown trout do, but they're generally stocked into ponds and lakes. They can tolerate a much wider range of conditions than pure brook trout.
Naturally occurring tiger trout are exceptionally rare. Brown trout are native to Europe, and brook trout are native to North America, so historically they didn't coexist, meaning that there was no opportunity for wild hybrids to occur. But that changed in the 1880s as species were moved around. Even now, successful tiger trout naturally hatching is practically zero, because brown and brook trout spawning times and behaviors just don't match well. Basically, all the tiger trout you will ever encounter come from a hatchery. Tiger trout are considered sterile. Because brown trout and brook trout have different chromosome counts, any embryos that do develop cannot produce offspring. Sterile fish are actually desirable for fisheries managers since they get a self-limiting fish. So like the splake, tiger trout must be stocked annually. Hatcheries have been producing tiger trout since around the 1960s for sport fishing. Fish and wildlife agencies like them both as a novelty trophy fish and a predator to control undesirable species. They are now stocked in many western states. Wiper is a cross between a female white bass and a male striped bass. Their look is intermediate between a stocky white bass and a sleek striped bass. They have a deep body and an arched back like a white bass, but they are larger in size due to the genetics of the striped bass. Adult wipers are commonly caught at around 16 to 30 inches or 3 to 12 pounds. Their sides have horizontal stripes of dark gray, but these stripes are often broken or irregular across the middle of the body, especially behind the gills. A wiper's stripes may be more broken than a pure striped bass and more extended than a pure white bass. Similar to striped bass, a wiper will have two toothy patches on the back of the tongue. In short, if you see a striped bass-like fish with a very deep football-shaped body and somewhat jumbled stripes, it's probably a wiper. Wipers are active schooling predators. They behave a lot like striped bass feeding on forage fish often near the surface or in midwater. They can leap and dash violently when hooked. They're usually found in large lakes and reservoirs where there's plenty of open water and bait fish. They tolerate warmer waters than the striped bass and they often remain active in reservoirs even in the summer. Anglers prize them as a fun sport fish as they fight aggressively and also taste good. Wipers are basically all hatchery origin. White bass and striped bass have some limited overlap in spawning in a few lakes, but natural hybridization is rare because their spawn timing and habits differ. Generally, any wiper you catch has been stocked from a hatchery. Wipers are mostly sterile or at least weakly fertile. Unlike the trout hybrids, they can technically reproduce under rare conditions, but it's nearly non-existent. In practice, fisheries treat them as requiring annual stocking. Many agencies even create triploid wipers by pressure or heat shocking the fertilized eggs to ensure that they are sterile. Wipers serve for both recreational and environmental uses. In reservoirs, they help control prey fish also, since they are considered to be sterile, managers can stock a lot of fingerlings each year to sustain a fishery without fear of them overrunning native or pre-established fish. The tiger muskie is a cross between a female muskellunge and a male northern pike. Some programs also use female pike and male muskie, but it is definitely more common to use the female muskie and male northern pike. This fish is huge and fierce looking. It has a long torpedo-like body with a duckbill snout, just like both parents or really all members of the East Hawks. The tail is more rounded like a muskie, distinguishing it from the pike's more forked tail. Color-wise, tiger muskies usually have vertical dark bars or spots on a light background. This is an opposite color scheme of the northern pike, which has light spots on dark. The pattern can vary in boldness. Most tiger muskies are caught between 24 to 40 inches long and weigh anywhere from a few pounds to up to 20 pounds or more. Like the muskellunge, however, they are capable of an enormous size. Tiger muskies over 50 inches and over 50 pounds have reportedly been caught. Tiger muskies are ambush predators. They lie in weedy cover along drop-offs, waiting to burst out and seize prey with their toothy jaws. They eat anything that can fit down their throat, be it fish, frogs, and even ducklings. They behave much like the pure muskellunge, being mostly inactive in the day 
and becoming much more active at dusk and dawn. Anglers consider tiger muskies one of the ultimate game fish. They're strong fighters that can give an angler the fight of a lifetime. They are also excellent leapers and thrash violently when hooked. They are often stocked in cold, clear lakes and like covers such as wood, weed beds, or rocks. In general, they tolerate slightly warmer water than pure muskies do. Tiger muskies can occur naturally if the northern pike and the muskellunge spawn at the same time in the same place, but this is uncommon. However, it occasionally does happen and nature will produce a tiger muskie. But for the most part, tiger muskies are generally hatchery produced and stocked. Fish managers first began raising them in the 1960s, and today tiger muskies are stocked in many Midwest and Western lakes. Tiger muskies are sterile. As with the tiger trout, the two parent species have different chromosome counts. So even if a tiger tried to spawn, almost no viable eggs would result. In effect, they cannot establish breeding populations. Being sterile is an important asset for the use of this fish, as such a predator species could become very problematic if reproduction was feasible and they got out of hand. Therefore, each year, tiger muskie populations are maintained by stocking only. Interestingly, because they are sterile, tiger muskies tend to eat a lot more and allocate energy to growth, so they often grow faster and can reach trophy sizes at a young age. Managers also like them to help control abundant prey like carp or bullheads. Here in the reservoirs near me, tiger muskie are often used to control overabundant populations of Utah chub. In short, the tiger muskie is an apex predator combining the muskie's size and pattern with the pike's hardiness. It is often noted as the fish of 10,000 casts, but the reward of landing a huge tiger muskie just makes it all worth it. Sogai is a cross of the female walleye and the male sauger. Both parents belong to the perch family Persidae. These two species do spawn in the same waters where their ranges overlap primarily in the Mississippi Basin and the Great Lakes tributaries. So sogai can actually occur naturally where both parent fish are present. However, sogai stocking is extremely common as well. Sogai look very much like walleye, but with a few hybrid cues. To identify a sogai, check its spiny dorsal fin. Walleye will have a clear front dorsal fin with no spots, and sauger have obvious dark spots on that fin. Sogai typically have a mix of the two, often a few spots and also containing bars on the spiny dorsal. Sogai bodies tend to be a bit leaner, similar to the sauger. Size-wise, sogai grow very fast and often outpace pure sauger, reaching 5 to 10 inches very quickly. Mature sogai in good waters can be 18 to 25 inches long and weigh anywhere from 8 to 12 pounds. They rarely reach the very large sizes of walleye, but a 5 to 10 pound sogai is a common trophy for anglers. Apart from looks, sogai also behave very similar to the walleye, schooling on drop-offs and in mid-depths feeding on small fish like shad and minnows. They prefer lower light conditions like dawn, dusk, overcast days, or in the middle of the night, just like the walleye. Habitat-wise, they adapt well to both rivers and large reservoirs. In fact, sogai are more tolerant of warmer and murky waters than pure walleye, which is why some states stock them in reservoirs or tailwaters where walleye struggle. They can also inhabit shallow waters better than sogar, giving them a versatile feeding range. Anglers often catch sogai on jigs or trolling lures. This fish is also considered to be excellent eating just like the walleye. Because walleye and sauger spawn in overlapping ranges, sogai can and do occur naturally. However, the wild occurrence is often very low and unpredictable. Since walleye and sauger have the same chromosome number and are closely related, hybrid sogai can spawn with each other or even back cross with walleye or sauger. That said, a healthy population seldom arises because the hybrids usually spawn slightly out of phase or in different habitats. Most fisheries prefer to stock them rather than rely on natural reproduction. So while sogai aren't sterile, their reproduction is limited enough that managers treat them like a stocked hybrid, needing regular plantings for a sustained fishery. Thank you so much for watching this video and learning about hybrid fish. If you haven't already, please subscribe and I hope to see you on the next one.